sister. And I'm Ethan, I'm Grace's partner, and if all things go well, I'll be Tom and Kelly's future brother-in-law. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, Alright, so we're all gathered here today to celebrate the newlyweds, Tom and Kelly, and I'm sure you've all been invited because you're all very important parts of their lives. Um, however, a few of you may know the whole story as to how these two amazing people grew up and came to be the people that they are today. Yeah, so Grace and I thought it'd be fun today to do like a bit of a multi-media presentation um, to run through the details of their <laughs> lives. Um, so with a, bit, with a bit of a slide presentation, um, we're going to try and make it seem like it's not scripted, but obviously <laughs> it's very scripted. Um, so we'll be starting from, from their early days, from when they were kids, um, all the way up to now. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully give you some insight into uh, who they are as people um, how they, and how they got to be where they are today. Um, so let's grab our drinks and uh, settle in for a bit of a, a journey. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, Kelly T. Tui Zun Trim was born in a small province of Dak Lak in Vietnam. She is the older of two siblings growing up on a coffee farm with her younger brother. She spent her formative years playing with her friends in the morning and napping outside her house in the afternoons. Growing up, she would often help her mum harvest, dry, and sort coffee beans. Sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? For those of you who know Kelly will know her as a tenaciously motivated and hardworking person. However, you might be surprised to find out that she was quite the rebel growing up. She hated art class in particular in school. And, and refused to do the homework. And it got so bad that one day her teacher came knocking on the door, informing Kelly's mum that she needed to submit her homework or that she would fail. <laughs> Kelly's mum pleaded with her to comply. Kelly refused, and her mum had no other choice but to complete the homework herself. <laughs> <laughs> and Susan Kim over there. You know, he was a bit of a fussy child. He didn't really like taking photos and in general he just wasn't the best child. <laughs> but luckily, for our parents, they were able to birth a beautiful, beautiful daughter who was far <laughs> in every way, I'd say. <laughs> Jokes aside, though. <laughs> Tom was definitely a sensitive child and a gentle soul. For instance, when he was three, uh, he was constantly bullied by his cousin, who, mind you, was only two. <laughs> uh, as Tom was being bitten and hit constantly, Dad would watch from afar, frustrated. And being an ex-military man, he called Tom over and he said, Tom, you go hit your cousin and hit him hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Tom walked up to Kwang Shin, his cousin, puffed his chest out, no, wound up for a big punch. But what Dad forgot to tell him was that a good punch was a punch that actually connects with the face. <laughs> so Tom essentially was just hitting the air in front of Kongshu, <laughs> afraid to hit him because he had such a gentle soul. <laughs> that being said, being a sensitive man definitely has its perks. I mean, in, high, uh, in school, he was definitely very popular with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and not the bloody nose, he was always getting those as well growing up. <laughs> Speaking of school, Tom did very, very well academically, but he was also an exceptional violinist. He'd play in multiple different ensembles, and my parents actually owned a string instrument store, so after high school, he'd always come to help them out. In fact, if uh, Tom, it was a guaranteed sale for my parents, if Tom ever played the violin for the customers, both parents and children, they'd be so surprised that a $200 violin could sound so good whenever he played. <laughs> Despite his clear talent in music, Tom decided to pursue a more academic career, and he went on to study economics at the University of Queensland. But outside of the art classroom, Kelly was actually quite the academic prodigy, which became evident in her early years at school. 
she was unfazed by criticism, and the best way to motivate Kelly was to tell her that she couldn't do something. And it was this unrelenting drive that allowed Kelly to be offered the opportunity to study at Vietnam's most prestigious high school in Hanoi, in the country's north, <laughs> quite far away from her hometown. This is a massive achievement for a girl from a, from a country town. And as a testament to her parents' dedication, they packed their bags and moved their home and followed Kelly to the big city to allow her to pursue her dream. The dream of marrying a Korean-Australian grain trader. <laughs> to get to school, Kelly would sit behind her mum on, uh, on the ride uh, as she rode her bicycle, which got harder as year on year as she grew, grew older. One day, when her mum was struggling up the hill, Kelly promised her that she would be successful so that all the family sacrifices would be worthwhile one day. And after years of hard study, Kelly eventually received a full scholarship to come here to study in Australia <laughs> at the best university in the world, the University of Queensland. Where's my new cute boy there? <laughs> it was that UQ scholarship ceremony where Kelly first laid eyes on Tom she thought to herself, yeah, it's kind of cute. <laughs> and over the, over the next few years, they grew closer, forming a friendship group. And during this time, they had late night study sessions, shared meals together, and even went on some trips away. However, Tom was reserved, and Kelly wouldn't be able to gauge how interested he was in her. They would both graduate with first class honors, However, they would go their separate ways. Kelly decided to go down the path of research, pursuing a PhD in statistics. And now, Dr. Kelly Shrin. <laughs> Dr. Kelly Shrin is now a lecturer at James Cook University in Cairns, having worked also as a data scientist at Data61 and the CSIRO. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Pursuing research gave Kelly the opportunity to travel the world. Oh my god! Whilst attending conferences and networking with other academics around the world. To date, she's visited 27 countries and has even hiked up to Mount Everest base camp. <laughs> she's an avid hiker and is always keen to discover new places, something she's been sharing with Tom in the time that they've been together. After graduation, he moved to London for about a year, where he discovered the highs and the lows of trading. I think Tom will be okay if I say that he's quite stubborn when he wants to be, and isn't very good at asking for help when he needs it. For instance, he went through a bit of a rough patch when he was in London, and finances were definitely a bit tight. And so one day, he was sitting on the curbside, eating his lunch, and a little boy walks past and gasps and says to his dad, oh, look at that man, he's eating a whole block of cheese for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but look, thankfully, Tom figured things out and he came back to Australia a much stronger person. And definitely full with calcium too. <laughs> no longer keen on the high pressure finance life, Tom decided to settle in Toowoomba, where he became a grain trader. He'd come back to Brizzy every weekend to participate in the Queensland Korean Orchestra and, of course, see his favourite sister every week. In 2015, our parents, Stacey and Susan, they went on a bit of a caravanning trip down here in Tasmania, where they fell in love with the, with the state. And so the year after, they decided to permanently move down and settle here. Having had enough of Toowoomba, Tom decided to pursue farming, thinking perhaps, maybe he'd be casted on the next season of Farmer Wants a Wife. <laughs> In 2015, uh, sorry, I'm going back again. What we haven't mentioned is that over these years, Tom and Kelly still kept in touch. When Tom
Beautiful move to Tasmania. Kelly would always find re reasons to visit. <laughs> I mean, she kept coming every six months. And so I began having suspicions that something more was going on. I told Tom, no girl would ever come to see you just as a friend. <laughs> and so, as it turns out, <laughs> as it turns out, I was right as usual. And something, a romance, was blossoming. And on one of Kelly's visits, Tom finally grew some balls and confessed <laughs> his feelings for her, <laughs> asking if he wanted to make this official. She said yes, obviously. <laughs> Unfortunately, this didn't change the fact that they were separated by 3,500 kilometers and two states. But they learned to make it work. Tom was busy helping his family renovate a house in Launceston. <laughs> Rearing two boisterous farm dogs. Aren't they enjoying? Not to mention playing with his new expensive equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Kelly was busy <laughs> bending her shape self into strange shapes under the guise of exercise. And in between the yoga sessions, she was busy teaching classes about modeling uncertainty in econometric models <laughs> and by Asian interference for high dimensional data. I won't elaborate any further because I assume, like me, you know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. But luckily in the 21st century, 21st century, long distance relationships are easier than ever. Oh, well, that's you. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they moved their relationship online, video chatting every night, exercising online together, and uh, exchanging care packages for one another. Oh, yeah, it was very nice. Tom would eventually move to Melbourne after being offered a job there, and uh, Kelly would come for a couple months at a time, where they lived together and experienced domestic life. They'd go on hikes, cook exotic meals, enjoying each other's company, made all the sweeter after months spent apart. On one of these adventures, Tom and Kelly went on a hike in Marysville, like, she, like they mentioned. And when they got back to their Airbnb, Tom suggested that they play a game of Scrabble. Kelly, never to turn down an intellectual challenge, accepted. Except this time, Tom only laid out 14 letters. He asked Kelly to unscramble them. Quite easy for Kelly, I believe. <laughs> Kelly cried, Tom cried, and she said yes. And this brings us to now, as we sit here as their friends and family celebrating their special day. Before we wrap up though, Tom, I don't say this enough, but you're definitely... <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.